Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight and taking your Saturday night to come and uh, listen to me talk about whiteness and my podcast, We Need to Talk About Whiteness. Um, my name is Dr. Maria Mfosua. I'm a journalist and a documentary filmmaker. I've also got an academic background um, looking at particularly at post-colonial uh, societies and uh, movements, uh, anti-colonial movements. I have a PhD from Oxford looking specifically at those areas. In 2019, I set up the podcast, We Need to Talk About Whiteness, to engage in conversations around racism, but with a focus on whiteness. And I guess maybe the first question that always comes up is one that I pose to all of my guests. Um, so uh, we're now at episode 19, which was just released this week. Um, what is whiteness is one of the questions I asked. And wh why did I want to ask that question? Well, partly because it seemed to me that um, the focus of anti-racism seemed to be placing the onus on the victims of racism, my people of color, those who are experiencing racism, to deal with a problem that was rooted in um, ideologies and structures of power that had been developed principally by what we would call white people, Europeans, um, and subsequently um, Americans. Um, I think I should point out that just as whiteness is a construct, just as race is a construct, whiteness is a construct. It emerges from the world of uh, critical race studies in America, which if you're following the news, you will have gathered has um, a fairly bad rep uh, when it comes to uh, the current government's view of what should be taught. Um, why does it have a bad rep? I think it's probably because there's a certain resistance still in this country to recognizing or acknowledging uh, forms of systemic racism. Um, I think we'll touch on a lot of the uh, points uh, in, in the talk now, but overall what I would say is that the study uh, or the, the investigation of whiteness I launched in with the podcast was very much about trying to understand the structure underpinning racism. Where does racism come from? Where does the belief uh, firstly, in the concept of races, which does not exist. Race is a construct, although racism is very real. So we all have different ethnicities, but they don't necessarily have implications, um, certainly not hierarchical ones in terms of human value. So where did that concept come from and what kind of impact has it continued to have um, in our societies um, until the modern day. So that's what the podcast set out to do. And in each episode, my objective was to engage with um, a particular um, individual, um, you know, everyone from film directors to uh, comedians via um, academics, journalists, fashion designers, all of whom had a particular, have a particular take on um, this conversation around whiteness. Um, and in particular, as I said, one of my first questions to them is always, what is whiteness? Now, um, so obviously, or maybe not obviously, um, I am racialized as white. I am half French, half Irish. Um, but I also happen to be Muslim. And for most of my adult life, I wore a headscarf from the age of 21. Um, and during the period in which I started to um, wear um, dress that would identify me as Muslim, I suddenly awoke to the reality that there were two tiers in our society, or at least two tiers. There was the tier of um, what I would like to call white innocence, um, which was the world that I um, existed in prior to that, in which uh, my uh, presence in a space was unquestioned, my perspectives always deemed important, um, my value um, virtually always recognized, although uh, arguably between men and women there are differences there and able-bodied and disabled also. Um, and I guess what I really started to realize was that once I started to be identified as non-white or off-white or not part of the white majority, which is um, how people started to perceive me once I was wearing um, uh, clothes that identified me as a Muslim, I then started to also be treated differently in different uh, spheres of my life. And this would include things like being followed around um, a shop that I had been shopping in for many years and never ever had that experience prior to that. It was undue hostility from strangers in a way that sometimes felt surprising and um, 
unreasonable and in many ways um, unnecessary <laughs> relative to uh, whatever the situation was, um, all the way through, obviously, to instances of, of actual uh, verbal uh, abuse, um, uh, you know, through to various forms of threats. So it was a bit of a wake up call to the experience um, of racism, which, you know, I'd heard obviously about secondhand from a lot of my friends, but I suddenly realized that actually um, these aren't uh, sort of individual instances. Um, It's almost like stepping through the looking glass um, into a world in which your presence, your existence is, has a, has a question mark over it and you have to justify every aspect of it. And I know that might not seem um, intuitively um, true to many people who haven't experienced it, but that certainly um, was my experience for many, many years. Um, and so that was one of the motivations, really. It, was, uh, it continues to be a motivation because till this day, I consider the fact that um, when I talk about um, my views, my identity, my beliefs, that I still have to um, uh, moderate or be, be attentive to how I talk about my faith, for example, um, because a lot of people will not deem it acceptable for me to speak uh, from a uh, Muslim subjectivity in particular conversations. So yesterday, to give you a concrete example, I was doing a, a panel on feminism and talking about whiteness in feminism and what that looks like. And to me, it was the experience of never really being en- able to enter that space and speak as a Muslim who's also a feminist and having to actually justify my presence in that group as a Muslim. So why you know, I'd have to essentially answer to white women in the group who considered themselves judge and jury of what constitutes feminism as to whether I was a veritable feminist. So back to the podcast. The podcast started out really from uh, understanding through that personal experience, but also in recent years becoming increasingly aware that um, friends, um, colleagues were becoming very uh, frustrated with a conversation on anti-racism, which, as I said, continued to place the onus on uh, those who were, uh, if we're going to talk structurally speaking, um, not those really uh, in in charge of creating the unequal power relations. Um, So it seemed like it's a uh, white problem created by white people and therefore probably needs white people to address um, and find a solution. Um, James Baldwin famously said, what white people have to do is to try and find out in their own hearts why it was necessary to have a N-word in the first place. Because I'm not a N-word, I'm a man. But if you think I'm an N-word, it means you need it. And I think Quotes like his, quotes like Toni Morrison's, who says the belief in whiteness as a category of specialness covers up deep-seated insecurity and doubt. What are you without racism, she asks. Are you any good? Are you still strong? Are you still smart? Do you even like yourself? And so these were um, uh, sections I'd read in, in books that would really make me think, okay, there is such a thing as whiteness. I've experienced my version of it. Um, and yet we don't really seem to be discussing it. Why do we not talk about whiteness? Why do we always focus on uh, racism, which is the manifestation of whiteness and not whiteness, which I regard as the structure from which uh, racism flows? The best description I actually found of whiteness was uh, one author who spoke about um, whiteness being like that uncle, that crazy uncle that we all have in the attic, Um, or or in the family who basically has all this accumulated um, wealth, who's a kind of nasty piece of work. And um, we don't particularly like him and and we certainly um, don't want to be like him, uh, but we vaguely tolerate him and we look forward to inheriting um, the wealth that he passes down when he dies. So for me, that's a really good representation of how I perceive whiteness and therefore the role that I see Um, people who are racialized as white needing to take in addressing the problem of racism. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below.
Or visit IAI.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.